Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on Wednesday, December 28th, our final Midweek Connection of 2022 here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're here to do what we ordinarily do. Let's read our daily lectionary text for today, talk about it, and see what uh, God might have for us today. So thanks for tuning in. And um, let me open this in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, uh, it's hard to believe that this year is coming to a close, uh, but it seems like every time a year comes to a close, uh, it, it's almost like it snuck up on us in a way. But Lord, we trust and affirm that you are a God who is in control of all of time, that you yourself stand outside of time. And because of that, we can trust that everything from the beginning of creation to its consummation, that you are in control. And since we, your created beings, live within your providence, Lord, we trust our very lives to you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've given for us to be in your word today. And we trust that you will speak to us through it. And I pray, Lord, that you would, by your spirit, continue to transform us into the people that you would have us to be. So we thank you and we praise you. And it is in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Mm. We're going to start this morning with Psalm Two. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will declare the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. With trembling, kiss his feet, or he will be angry, and you will perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all who take refuge in him. In our usual psalm, Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives, food to, he gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. We have two prophecies from Isaiah today, and so I will read the first one from Isaiah chapter 49, verses 13 through 23. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his suffering ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Your builders outdo your destroyers, and those who laid you waste go away from you. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather. They come to you. As I live, says the Lord, you shall put, on, put all of them on like an ornament, and like a bride you shall bind them on. Surely your waste and your desolate places and your devastated land, surely now you will be too crowded for your inhabitants, and those who swallowed you up will be far away. The children born in the time of your bereavement will yet say in your hearing, The place is too crowded for me. Make room for me to settle. 
Then you will say in your heart, Who has borne me these? I was bereaved and barren, exiled and put away. So who has reared these? I was left all alone. Where then have these come from? Thus says the Lord God, I will soon lift up my hand to the nations and raise my signal to the peoples, and they shall bring your sons in their bosom, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall be your foster fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. With their faces to the ground they shall bow down to you, and lick the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who wait for me shall not be put to shame. And our second reading from Isaiah is chapter 54, verses 1 through 13. Sing, O barren one who did not bear, burst into song and shout, you who have not been in labor, for the children of the desolate woman will be more than the children of her that is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the site of your tent and let, your, let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left, and your descendants will possess the nations and will settle the desolate towns. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Do not be discouraged, for you will not suffer disgrace. For you will forget the shame of your youth and the disgrace of your widowhood. You will remember no more. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. The God of the whole earth he has called. For the Lord has called you like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, like the wife of a man's youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overflowing wrath for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion for you, says the Lord your Redeemer. This is like the days of Noah to me, just as I swore that the waters of Noah would never again go over the earth, so I have sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. O afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, I am about to set your stones in, in antimony and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of jewels, and all your wall of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the prosperity of your children. Our gospel lesson today is from Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 14. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called the child whom he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into the hell of fire. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. And back to our psalm, Psalm 110. The Lord says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends out from Zion your mighty scepter. Rule in the midst of your foes. Your people will offer themselves willingly on the day you lead your forces on the holy mountains. From the womb of the morning, like dew, your youth will come to you. 
The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter heads over the wide earth. He will drink from the stream by the path. Therefore, he will lift up his head. And our final psalm today from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart and the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Well, these are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Two, two passages from Isaiah today. It's like mm -hmm. that's that's going to be great, right? <laughs> why don't we Why don't we start with the Matthew passage, and it's a little yes. bit more familiar, and then maybe we can go back to the Isaiah and and see if we can make a connection. Right. Yeah, a midweek connection, right? Because we do believe that God speaks to us throughout all of Scripture from beginning to end. We do believe that it is a consistent message. Um, and in areas where we might not be as comfortable or in things that we might not uh, be as familiar with, we right. do trust that the Bible is the best interpreter of the Bible. So those right. places that are easier to understand can help us to understand things that are difficult. And sometimes then when we actually do understand one of the difficult things that makes even the easier have a greater depth of meaning right. and a depth of understanding so it does work both ways and we do trust that uh, God's Holy Spirit does speak to us so if the uh, heading of our chapter according to the New Revised Standard Version is true greatness and Jesus uh, is sitting with his disciples and they're asking him well who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and Jesus does something totally different he brings a child brings him to him, puts him in the midst, and says, whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And then the rest of that passage talks about um, the, 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 the problems when people bring uh, stumbling blocks or temptations mm -hmm. or, or sin that gets in the way and all these kind of things. So this idea of true greatness, um, being like a child. And I think, I think if we look at it as... Um, what Jesus is presenting here is something totally different than what the world would present. Right. Children don't have power. Children they don't, don't power. have authority. They don't have, they don't bring anything to the table here. So how in the world could they be great? Right. Um, I right. think that was true then. I think that's still looked at in society the same way mm. that children have their place, but they don't, they don't have they don't have authority. They don't have power. Right. They don't have those things. Right. Um, and I think that's I think that's exactly what uh, what's right. Um, how do we uh, how do we recognize ourselves in relation to the the kingdom of heaven? How mm -hmm. do we recognize our own place in it? Um, and I think again, uh, how can how can adults become children again? Mm -hmm. Well, clearly we can't. Um, Physically. Physically demature. Right. Uh, uh, in that regard. But there has to be an appreciation of uh, what, what are the childlike qualities that would make them great in the kingdom of heaven. I think this absolute trust. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at children and I think sometimes we would, we would use the word, you know, naive. They just, they just believe things at face value. You know, Jesus... Um, God offers us these these promises, and and He offers Himself, and and He issued these covenants. And I think children, when when we promise them things, or when when we make agreements with them, they just accept those with 
you know, I think some people would say naive and that's not, that wouldn't be a positive word, um, almost this blind trust Hmm. that they have. But I think that when we look at the things that God offers to us and, and the covenants and the promises, I think that's exactly what's needed is this blind trust. We may not understand, mm. but you spoke those words and we trust that you are good. We trust in the love that you have for us and we trust you at face value. This is what you said. Right. And I think children get that. Right. They nail that. You know, they get that. They they have that in them. Whereas we, I think as adults, you know, seeing is not always believing, you know, you, you watch a video, that doesn't mean anything because you right. can, you know, but, but the world, I think sometimes we get hardened by the world and we don't trust the mm. way that we should. I think that we, um, we sometimes I think question, well, is that, you know, but I think that's the world affecting us, you know, because, um, the world can offer promises and, and they fall short. And I think that we can get um, cynical. I think we could. And um, and you don't see that. I don't think you see cynicism in children. Right. Well, and and we're sitting here in the sanctuary, obviously, and <laughs> right. we've got the beautiful backdrop behind us, and um, our timing, I guess, right here at noon. <laughs> right. We're the gonna bells. have we're gonna have some background bell music, <laughs> and so if you can if you can hear that, great. And if you can't, well, that's okay because it is <clears throat> it is beautiful. Um, but there was something that you said that really uh, struck me in terms of, uh, especially the section that immediately follows after this true greatness, in terms of stumbling blocks, or if your hand causes you to sin, or your foot causes you to sin, that it's it's better to enter life uh, lame or maimed or blind. Uh, enter into the kingdom rather than it is to go into uh, uh, thrown into eternal fire and there was something about the trust that you said when it comes to children um, you said blind trust and it was interesting you know thinking about it like, well if, you know, if you're blind it's better to better to enter heaven blind as in not being able to physically see but trusting that God is actually good and I think that's a that's a hard challenging word because we we as adults you know it's like well we want to know things we want to be aware of everything that's going on um but there's something about that trust I think that is so so very important um that God is actually so good to us even though we might not be able to see how everything is always going to work out right yeah um sorry i don't want to i don't want to jump to another thing if you still have a thought on that uh no go ahead um go ahead well and and it's sitting here in the sanctuary is is i don't know that if we'd been sitting somewhere else i don't know if this would have struck me but um it's even on Sunday mornings, for those of you who watch on Sunday morning, you know, when we have our children's time, regardless of whether it's me or you or someone else doing it, um, these, these walkways here in the church, you know, children are running. They are running down for this time. And they have no idea what's going to be shared, but there is an excitement and there is this um just this awe Mm. and um and i think in the christmas season in the decorations and and having small children and and seeing the way that they look at the world but even that you know when they come forward for this time that they have this message that's just for them um it's not just for them but you know right i I get it (laughs) but they're coming and they're just excited Mm -hmm. like they can't wait they have right. no idea what it's going to be, but it doesn't matter. They are excited. They want to be here. They want to be, here. Yeah. They want to be a part of this. They want to hear what's going to be shared with them. And I think maybe sometimes we need to be mm. a little more excited and in, in, in awe and, and open. They are a blank slate. Open. Right. What, what's there? What is it that God wants for them today? And how are they going to participate in that? <laughs> well, and uh, you know, the parable of the lost sheep, we have uh, often read this from the Luke uh, gospel, gospel according to Luke, but Matthew has it here in a different different section. Um, obviously, referring to uh, everything that's come before, and so again, take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, because it's their angels that are continually before God's face. That it is uh, He who sees them, He who would pursue them, He who would, if they end up lost, will leave others in order to find them, um, and. 
do we consider ourselves essentially sheep that need to be found right. or do we consider ourselves like you know the shepherds in control of everything and i think in that regard um understanding that it is god who loves us as a shepherd loves his sheep right. um, as he loves the children so he does love us and so if we act as if we do not need to continually be found by him um because i've got my life together i'm good right. i've got it all you know i don't have problems or whatever i've worked right. really hard to to protect myself and to provide for myself uh and all of these things then i don't feel that same sense of urgency to be found by god right um and so i think your description of the children running forward uh during the service uh, they they want they want more of Jesus. They might not know exactly what that means, right? But I guess in some ways, do we even really know what it means? Right, right. <laughs> it's like, how does my life need to change? How do I rest in His presence? How do I right. experience uh, the the challenges in this life, recognizing that God is using those challenges to transform me? to be the person that he wants me to be. I think, right. wow, there's so much that we can go on and on yes. with, with Matthew on this. Um, and so, uh, I don't know, I think it might be worth looking a little bit back at the Isaiah passage. And and I think what we see is a little bit of, especially in, um, well, both passages that you've read, both have these indications of um, broken relationship or, mm -hmm. or, or at least damaged relationship, where the people of uh, the people of God are complaining that the Lord has forsaken them, or, right. uh, or those kind of things. But the the regular reassurance that God gives, you know, the the line I've inscribed you on the palms of my hands. It's like, right. uh, you know, we, we there's that song that we sing. He's got the whole world in his hands. And it's like, well, he's looking and he's. He's got our names inscribed on his hands. I know God is a spirit, and we sometimes anthropomorphize him. And and and, but here's God's words Himself saying, uh, "My my compassion for you is never going to end. Uh, my forgiveness of you, even the waste places that you thought were going to be perpetually." Uh, wasted are going to be filled with your offspring, filled with those who follow, filled with the blessings that God has for them. Um, even, even to the extent that all of the people uh, looking at Isaiah uh, chapter 49, this uh, uh, verse 23, kings shall be your foster fathers and their queens your nursing mothers with their faces to the ground. They shall bow down to you and lick the dust from your feet. Um, the people of Israel uh, frequently being oppressed by others, or uh, I think as Isaiah is writing about, in exile, in captivity, mm -hmm. to the world's kings, to the powerful queens, to the ones that would treat them um, harshly, right. in a way, treat them as children. Oh wait, here it is again, right? God says, they will be your servants. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is how you know that the Lord is God, that those who, have, uh, those who have exalted themselves will be humbled. Those who are humble will, will then be, be exalted. exalted. Yeah. Um, yeah, what do you got from 54? Well, and, <laughs> right, well, and from 54, you know, it's, you know, they, they are hard words, but then you get to this verse 9 and 10, and it's, this is like the days of Noah to me, just as I swore that the waters of Noah would never again go over the earth. So I've sworn that I will not be angry with you. Mm -hmm. I will not rebuke you. The mountains may depart, the hills may be removed, but my steadfast love will not depart from you. And my covenant of peace will not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Mm -hmm. And so there were these moments of harshness. There were these moments of exile. But that steadfast love, and that's the same thing in the Psalms. You know, we read that steadfast love endures. Right. And that is ever before us. Um, and then going back, you know, like you said, written on the hand. I mean, it is ever before. We are ever before him. And um, and so, um, I don't know. It was interesting to me you know it talks about this this barrenness and this mm -hmm. desolateness and um i'd have to go back and see the the verbiage there as you were reading it some of that as well but um 
out of this barrenness, out of this desolation, out of this humility and humbleness, out of all of these descriptive, descriptive words, these descriptors that are lowly, God brings something out of that mm -hmm. and gives value out of that. And so, um, and loves that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I think that's a that's a recurring theme throughout all of Scripture. It's not that God removes all of the challenges or the desolations from you, but He's right. there with you in the midst of those things. Um, right. And even thinking about, uh, you know, the children of the desolate woman will be more than the children of her that is married. It's just uh, all throughout Scripture we have these um, stories of barren women bringing forth children and then right. we have stories of, of women that have lots of children that then they are all deprived of through you know um, through their disobedience and the war and all whatever might have happened and so God is just being aware of all of history aware of the generations aware of how um, even our own children from time to time can uh, you know, can be fearful. They, right. you know, how many children are afraid of the dark? It's well, it's kind of the unknown. But they look to their parents to bring them um, comfort in the midst of that. And uh, God is the God is the ultimate parent uh, right. for His children. And it's not that uh, it's not that God changes all of the darkness into light, but He's there with us in the midst of the darkness. He is right. He is God even in the dark. Uh, as much as he is God in the light. Um, and so all of the, um, yeah, I, I love the, the reminder of the days of Noah. Um, right. Obviously God making a covenant with himself, you know, even after God purged the evil from the earth, you know, then he looks at Noah and his family and he goes, yeah, they're still going to do evil things. And it's like, but you know what? I'm not, not going to destroy them all. Not going to destroy <laughs> them all by flood. Um, so right. he is mindful of the covenant that he makes with us um, and is faithful to continue that. Hmm. And, I, and and as usual, I'm, I'm so grateful that we have uh, four Psalms. Um, the Psalm 2, again, talking, starting with God being the ruler over all of the nations of the earth, you know, and the kings and the rulers take counsel against the Lord. But God's like, nope, this is what I'm doing. I'm setting it up. No matter how much you think you're in control, God's in control. Right. And, and there's the foreshadow of Jesus, even with that, uh, today you are my son, today I've begotten you. Um, obviously, the psalm itself is, uh, the writer of that was thinking probably of how God took the people of Israel and called them his son as he was bringing them out of Egypt. Uh, no, no matter how much Pharaoh um, uh, tried to resist that, God right. brings Israel out of Egypt. So the rulers were conspiring, and God's like, no, I got this. Israel, you are my son. I've, made, I've begotten you. I will make the nations your heritage and all these things. But obviously then a foreshadow of Jesus who preexisted all of creation, that right. he was... Um, that, that Jesus was begotten, not made, uh, is in one of our creeds that we talk about, uh, that he is the ruler over all of the nations of the earth. And while the nations might not ever be judged completely by flood anymore, we know that, well, Jesus will, with a rod of iron, <laughs> dash right. them and pieces like a potter's vessel, those who resist his rule and authority, rescuing his children, bringing them to, um, bringing them to salvation. Um, and then Psalm 110 uh, is, is a psalm even that Jesus uses to describe his own uh, divinity because here's David singing of the Lord, saying to my Lord, there is someone that's a greater Lord than he is, even though David right. was king at the time. There's one coming after who is then that priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Go back and read your Genesis if you want to know who Melchizedek is. Melchizedek is. We don't have time to talk about it today, but right. just the, the the how we're seeing from Genesis, and we're looking forward to Revelation, even here in the Psalms, and it's right. just such a huge uh, reminder to us that God is sovereign over all of history, over all of time. So it's good, good stuff. Praise the Lord, right? Praise That's, the Lord. <laughs> there it is. Psalm one eleven, verse Psalm 111. one. 111. Praise the Lord. Yep, his praise endures forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hmm. All those who practice it have a good understanding. Well, uh, maybe maybe uh, my fear of the Lord should be greater, right? So that I would have greater understanding. Um, 
But uh, how else are you ever going to get into this unless you stay in his word and continue to love him and learn how to serve other people and do all those things that God commands us to do. He's good. He's in control. Got anything else? No. I'm we did a lot. I think that was a lot. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm not right. saying do more. I'm just saying. <laughs> right. it's like, yeah. So. All right. Well, that was good. That was. Well, you want us to close us in prayer? I'd be happy to. Great. Thank you. Gracious Lord, thank you for our time together today. Thank you for your words to us. Um, help us to, um, to take these words to heart. Help us to humble ourselves um, as small children. Help us to trust you as small tr children trust. And as we finish out the year and we look to this new year and as uh, resolutions uh, tend to, to come up this time of year and people try to, uh, to be, become more refocused um, in their lives, I pray that people um, turn to you and that it, it not be this, this short-lived resolution, but that we, we do, we take that resolve in our hearts and that we um, resolve to trust and to fear you and to um, love you better, that we may love others around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Well, we'll look forward to continuing midweek connection in the new year, um, unless God has something different for us. But I really like this, so uh, I think it's a good thing for us. Well, blessings to you. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, we uh, please do call the church. Um, I know that we've we've got change of office hours in terms of the um, New Year's and things, but we will have a worship at ten thirty on Sunday morning. No Sunday school. No Sunday school. Uh, but we'll look forward to seeing you here ten thirty uh, on uh, Sunday. Sunday morning. January 1st. Take January care. 1st. All right. Bye-bye.